Hi kids, it's me again. I had so much fun doing that other video, I decided, why not do another one? Doesn't really matter, does it? Woke up today and it's extremely cold out. The wind is blowing. Gave me a good idea to maybe make some comfort food. Um, the problem is I'm slightly chillied out. Did that a couple of weeks ago. Eh, not in the mood for it. So I had to go see what else was in the cabinets. Usually when I'm kind of low on supplies, um, like today, I will just kind of research on the internet to see what I can do with the ingredients I've got. So we're going to do a slow cook crock pot meal, crock pot meal, try that again, and see what happens. And we will go from there. And I will talk to you guys in a few minutes. Okay guys, so what I got right now is I went ahead and I've got my crock pot out. I have found in my freezer, I have these steamed vegetables, which are a lot better for you than the canned vegetables. Then I have some boneless chicken breast. I found some cream of mushroom soup, or you can use your cream of chicken mushroom soup. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. We've got chicken broth. I went ahead and found some garlic in the refrigerator because I ran out of my fresh garlic. Um, my chicken flavored bouillon powder you could use the powder or the cubes I like the powder better black pepper and then of course my typicals that I really like are the garlic powder again and the onion powder now I'm not sure if I want to go biscuits or if I want to go noodles but I do have I know this is cheating but this is really good the red lobster biscuits mix really good either I will make it and pour it on top of it or I might just wait till the end and I'm going to put in some pastry egg noodles. I'm cheating on that too because I don't know how to cook that yet. We'll figure that out together. Or I could just mix and match and do it all. So let me get things organized and I'll come back to you and let you know what's going on. Basically this is going to be a really simple meal. So there's just a few things you got to remember. Other than that it's just throwing whatever you want in there and letting it cook. Um, usually when you have the vegetables, you always put your vegetables on the bottom of the crock pot first. So I just opened up one bag. I'm going to see how much that gives me. And since it is just me and Doug, I think that should be pretty much enough vegetables for us. And then lay your meat on top of that. So I am only going to put three of the chicken breasts on there. I don't want to overdo it. That's a pretty big one. I'm going to do one more. Let's see if I can find something smaller. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put my three chicken breasts on top of that. The next thing you do is you just dump everything else on that you want. Um, I did find some white onions. I just I chopped up about half of one in there, so I'm going to dump that on there as well. And then when it comes to the chicken bouillon cubes, chicken flavored cubes, um, I have a little bit in here. Probably the equivalent of one cube. You don't want to put too much in there because it will make it salty. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump everything in there and take pictures as I go. And we'll see what we got from there. Okay, so... One of the things I decided since I went ahead and used both of those cans of soups, I'm going to add in one more can of just water. You can keep an eye on this as it's cooking because you are going to put this on low and it's going to cook on low for at least six hours. So while you're doing this, you can stir it up to see if you need something more, if you need something less. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm going to go ahead then and just like we did before, put in your other ingredients your garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, whatever seasonings that you like. I'm going to put those in. I'm going to set the crock pot on low and then we're just going to see what happens from there. As you can see, this has been cooking for a while. It still has about an hour and 36 minutes left. And initially I'd only put in three chicken breasts, but I decided to put in four. At this time though, I've taken out the chicken breasts so that I can go ahead and start slicing this up. They're nice and tender. You just want them in edible chunks. After I'm done slicing these, I'm going to put them back into the crock pot where they are going to cook for at least another hour. I've also decided that I'm going to go ahead with the noodles. So, so far, it is bubbling. Um, about, I say about 15 minutes ago, instead of having on low, 
I went ahead and put it on high. I want to have it on high for about maybe an hour. Come in here, check it, and stir it because I want this to condense and cream it up, cream up or thicken up just a little bit longer. Okay, I just checked on the noodles, or I should say the sauce for the noodles. And so far, I don't quite like the thickness of it. I think it's a little too soupy. So, therefore, I'm going to go ahead and have to make some kind of a um, white thickening base. Um, I'm going to try to walk you through this. This isn't going to be the best in the world. But I have my pan out. And what you need is butter, flour, salt, and pepper. You could either use... I'm going to use some half and half. I love the way it creams up. So I'm going to use a half and half. You can use some milk or you can just use water or you can actually use some of your base that you already have from your chicken noodle soup. So I'm going to get this started and get it ready. As soon as I get the butter where I need it to be, I'm going to walk you through how to add in the flour, the salt and pepper and continually store it to where you need it to be to help for a thickening agent. I went ahead and put in some butter in this pan and it's, well, it's pretty high, but I want to make sure it's melted, but you want to make sure it's melted, but not burning and you want to get it a little hot because pretty soon I'm going to go ahead and put in some of the flour to go ahead and thicken it up and make sure that when you're doing this, don't wander off because you're going to have to constantly be over here, um, somehow stirring it so it doesn't burn, it doesn't stick, it doesn't do anything necessary but as soon as you see that that is melted and it's looking like it's hot enough or feels like it's hot enough actually I think I'm going to turn this up just a little bit um, basically when you start seeing this bubble but not burn is where you need it to be all right it is starting to bubble right now I'm going to go ahead and continue to have this uh, pretty high maybe on five or six and I'm going to grab my oops sorry about that I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the flour. And you're just going to go ahead and put some in here. Sorry about that. It cut off. You don't have to put a lot in there. And just go ahead with your spoon, your spatula. Start moving this around. The main thing about doing this is you don't want to get any big lumps in there. That's the worst thing. This is kind of the same basis you use when you're making gravy. If you want it extremely thick, you put in a lot of flour. If you don't want necessarily as thick, then you don't. Um, I have kind of a big proportion here in the soup, and I do like my things, I mean, everything pretty thick. So we're just going to continue to do this. It is almost, see, if you look at it, it's getting thicker, um, almost pasty-like, but it is not lumpy. All right, so that looks about right for me. I'm gonna go ahead and and it put in some pepper. I'm not gonna add any salt like I thought at this time. Last time I tasted the broth, it seemed okay. So some pepper is probably gonna be good. Now once this is where it's at, I'm gonna go ahead and get that half and half. You're doing the same thing as you did before. Now be careful with this. If you don't continue stirring this regularly, it will lump up on you and it will curdle and you do not want that. So, as you can see, it's starting to change. It's going to start congealing in a way. You can see that. Make sure you scrape your pan and make sure you just stir. That's all you're going to do is you are just going to sit here and stir it so it doesn't burn until it gets to the thickness that you want. And break, listen to the music. Okay, you guys, so I've got it to the consistency that I wanted, so I just took it off the stove. Let's see what we got here. All right, there are no lumps in it whatsoever, and it is nice and thick, and this should work out absolutely perfect here. Yeah, you didn't see that too well. As you can tell, look at the this. This is exactly how you make gravy. This is how you make exactly the white base. There is a light that is totally shining everywhere. Anyway, so what we're going to do next is I am going to go ahead and slowly start pouring this in with our meal. 
You don't want to do it too fast. You want to slowly put it in there and continue to stir. That way you don't lump it. The last thing you want to do is all this become lumped, okay? So, let me see how I'm going to do this one handed again. So as we jam out the music. I think I'm just going to put a couple spoonfuls in at a time, okay? And this kind of helps you when it comes to while it's cooking. You don't make it too thick. You don't make it too thin. You can do this as much as you want. And as I'm putting this in here, you can tell it's already starting to change the color and the thickness of it. Because the longer you cook this, the thicker it's going to get. So I'm going to kind of continue to do this until I have it done. All right, you guys. Still sitting here. Listen to music. We are almost done. I have got this to the thickness that I want. It tastes absolutely excellent. Remember to taste it while you're going. Last thing is, my timer says we've got about 45 minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this back down to low. Oops. Low. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and add our lovely noodles to it. You don't need to put this whole bag in. I think I'm going to put about half of the bag. Don't cook it too long. It's going to turn into mush. Go ahead, add as much as you think as you need. And yeah, maybe a little bit more than half for us. This is going to cook. It might help you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to stir this up a little bit. I'm going to put the lid back on this. Cook it for a half an hour on low, and your meal is done. It is ready to go. Okay, see you on the flip side. Okay, so we have a bonus segment. So Doug and I were talking. Doug. Oh. <laughs> he decided instead of pouring this over biscuits because it's gotten really thick, we're going to make some mashed potatoes. So I'm going to show you what you need to make homemade mashed potatoes. Oh. All right, like I said, this is nice and thick. It's nice and really thick. It looks absolutely wonderful. That's been cooking about 15, 20 minutes. Since we're going to go ahead and make mashed potatoes, what you need to get out then is get a nice big saucepan out, get your water on, go ahead and put that sucker in high because you're going to want it to boil. Now usually with the potatoes, I usually have at least two potatoes per person, but these are really small, so I grabbed a little extras. I can't grab them. Um, before you go ahead and cut them up, some people like to peel them off, but I like to keep the peels on. It's more nutritious. I'm going to wash them off. I'm going to go ahead and still use the half and half to get rid of it. You're going to use butter and salt and pepper, and we'll go from there. So the potatoes should be done now. The easiest way to figure out if this is done or not, I'm just going to poke them. And if they come off my fork, whoops, see that? They're just falling off the fork. They are done. So the next thing is I'm going to go ahead and shut off the heat. I'm going to take these over. Sorry. Here is my strainer. I've cleaned out my sink. We are going to go ahead and strain the potatoes. Go ahead and put those in there. While Doug is yelling in the other room for his dinner. Uh-huh. Okay. If you didn't hear Doug, he's teasing me in the background. All right, we're going to make sure that all the water is off of that. Take it back over to the pan. Potatoes are really easy to do. This over to the side. So let me go ahead. My masher, I don't use an electric one. I like to use this but one better. Now what we are going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of butter in here. Okay. A little bit of your butter in there. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. My salt shaker is not the best in the world. We're going to go ahead and put go ahead and put a little bit of butter. You don't have to put a lot of seasonings because remember we're going to put the noodles on top of this and a little bit and a half and a half. I wouldn't put too much in it at the beginning because you do not want it watery and too mushy. So I'm just gonna put a little bit and then you just go ahead and start mashing it the best you can. As soon as you have this mashed, you'll be able to tell whether or not 
you need a little bit more milk, half or half and half in there. That is actually almost where I need it to be. Not quite. I'm going to put a little bit more half and half. Not a lot. Just a little. And continue to go as you were before and mash it up. The next one I will have, I will put your finished plate on there. And we will be ready to eat, you guys, mashed potatoes. Very easy. If you want your mashed potatoes to have a little bit more flavor, put some onion in there. Put some garlic in there. Put some cheese in there. Everybody likes cheese. Anyway, see how this is working? I like to keep the skins on, and I don't want to make it too creamy because some people like a little bit of the chunks as well on there.